weird fucking guys. You're doing a manly thing and you're a fucking dork. I got my lightsaber wearing my Pokemon hat today. <laughs> Wow, you're a real renaissance man, you know that? Goddamn man-child. What a fucking dork. Yeah. But he's our dork. This is not for children. The fans drive me to do crazy things. They drive, they drive me to pull my pants down and rub my ass in people's faces and, and all them things. Hey, John. What's up, man? You still working on that same pack of wafers from the last episode? Last episode. Good Lord. A week ago. A week ago. <laughs> or a month ago, depending on when we put this episode out. Or 20 minutes ago. Or it was 20 minutes ago. Who knows? Ah. <sighs> Oh, yeah! Mm-hmm. Mm. This episode should just be us making weird noises. No. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. What about sex noises, dude? Are you a noise kind of guy, man? Like I don't know. Do you grunt? I'm sure I make some noises. Dude, I gotta tell you the honest I'm truth. I'm not dead silent. I am such a fucking idiot that when I'm like... Doing foreplay with my wife, I always purposefully like sabotage it and make the most awkward, uh, yeah. weird shit. <laughs> like if I grab her like ass or like you know feel her up a little bit or something, I'll make like a weird face or I'll like <laughs> like fucking grunt or something or like or I'll do I'll do like a I'll walk up behind her and do she hates it she fucking hates. She hates me because of this, but uh, I'll walk up behind her and I'll be like, "Hey, little girl." <laughs> I mean, I've done things I, like to the point where I was comfortable. Where I'll do like humorous shit. Oh, I like said a, the if, creepiest shit to well, her, dude. <laughs> like if if like somebody's like fucking like saying some nasty shit during it or whatever out of the blue, I'll be like, "I don't like that kind of language." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or I'll say some stupid shit like that. But, oh, uh, dude. And then what was a? Uh, let's see here. Another fucking thing I've done. Oh, usually like right after, like if it was like really good, I'll uh, I'll ironically say like that was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> For shits and giggles, one time I, like, oh. I told my wife, uh, I was like, "That was nice. The money's on the table." <laughs> A lot of times I'll just be like, it was the worst. <laughs> I mean, obviously it wasn't. I can't help it, dude. I think the comedian in me is yeah, just like... I, I gotta always got to fucking... say something stupid or shocking or, you know, take it over. I do that in everything now. I, I'm almost embarrassed by it sometimes. Like, when I fight, I fight nasty. Like, I, I'm always fighting with words. Really? Yeah, and it's like I already have it in my head what I'm going to say. It's, it's a really bad tick that comes from, like... A lifetime of watching people argue, you know? Hmm. So, I've already had, like, arguments in my head and stuff like that. And I really don't like it. I don't, it's something that I really don't like about myself. But I don't want to get too deep about that. Well, I think that... I think on a subconscious level... We learn to prepare. You yeah. know? So, like... You know, to steer it away from the bad things, which... You know, we all go through them... But even in life, I walk around uh, trying to make people laugh. I mean, sometimes it's an utter failure. Mm -hmm. Dude, I have notoriously said... The wrong thing at the wrong time oh to the wrong person. Oh my fucking God, dude. Yeah. I'm going to openly admit, and I swear to God, this is like a bad one. I fucked up royally, you know? Like, royally insulted somebody and did not mean to. Yeah. But, you know, like... You have to really think to yourself, like, dude, imagine that person dealing with that, you know? So, like, we were in a restaurant one time, and it was, like, a big gathering of people. And I, like, being me, like, thinking I'm being a dickhead, like, and I was, but I told the waiter that, uh, don't mind him, he's gay, you know? <laughs> and the fucking waiter is gay, and, 
and like, dude, walk, dude, the waiter, like, you could see the change on his face. Like, he was mortified. He was like, dude, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> and like, I remember thinking, what the fuck did I just do? Dude, I just went to the doctor the other day and I was getting blood drawn and stuff. I was getting my blood pressure checked and things. And uh, the doctor I go to, it's like, I never seen the same doctor twice. It's not like I have like one doctor. They're all like student doctors kind uh, of thing. Oh, yeah. So. You, like, make your appointment and, like, somebody reviews your chart or whatever the fuck. But uh, this time around, the guy comes in, and he's, like, really, like, he was really well built. He was chiseled. He was in great great shape and everything. He's a good-looking kid. Like, a good-looking <laughs> young guy. He comes in, and, dude, he's got the rainbow, like, fucking thing around his neck, like, holding his lanyard or whatever. So it's, like, a rainbow thing. He's, like, super, super homosexual. I could tell right off the bat. And uh, he sat down, and, like, it was so obvious that I couldn't fucking resist it. <laughs> I just looked at him and went, you gay? <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed. He was like, yeah, you're funny. You know, like, <laughs> but, you know, so, like, in that instance, it worked. But, yeah. I think that that's, like, the, uh, like, there's a lot of, tension in in our country right now about all of this and i really think that the only solution is to laugh at it yeah is to laugh yeah. at it man i mean now, for us it is maybe not for somebody else but for me and you the solution is just i want to just laugh about this come on i think at the end of the day when you know when everybody lightens up and realizes dude nobody's going anywhere this yeah. is a community that is a part of our country and we have to embrace it it's, right it's here i think it's just know? part of progress right it is. It's growing pains. Leave people alone. Let them be who they are. Yeah. Now, I, the kid that I insulted, I do feel, you know, I felt ashamed. I felt like, dude, that was fucked up. <laughs> you should have really thought about... I should be smarter than this. You know, yeah, like, right. like I didn't mean it in a malicious way, but... Now, like, if I were to, like, think about if I was that kid... Yeah, you don't understand the context of what I'm saying. Yeah, kind of he's yeah. just like, what the fuck, this guy's a piece of shit, he hates me because I'm gay, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, I'm just a fucking failure of a comedian. That's really what it is, is I, I actually hold nothing against you, and I'm really sorry that I hurt your feelings, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so if he is listening, hey, man, I did not mean to insult you that day. I truly apologize... <laughs> I'm sure he's not listening. <laughs> he's probably not listening. He's never going to fucking hear my my very sympathetic apology, yeah, you know? It's going to so, fall on gay deaf ears. Gay deaf ears, man. That should be the name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get a ton of ratings. Of, like some the gay community will be like, dude, you know what? These guys are all right. <laughs> They're all right. They understand us, man. I don't fucking understand you. I, I don't. I kind of like that. Know. Gay deaf ears. Gay deaf ears I is almost, a good one. I almost you know? want to make like a fucking like get some friends together and start a band and call it Gay Deaf Ears. Dude, that would be a fucking band. Yeah. You know that would be. <laughs> I got a friend that wants to do. Uh, he's like he's like a punk rock dude, and he's like, yeah, I, I want to start a band again. And Dude, he is punk rock as fuck. Yeah. He's covered in tattoos. He's got a mohawk. He like does blue collar work. He walks around at Doc Martens. He's just a punk punk rock kind of. He's awesome. Idiot. I love him. We should have him on this show because yeah. he is. Kevin's a, fucking... a big punk fan too. Kevin like that's like his most comfortable form of music. So like when he like records all those songs and like sends them and stuff like that, like that's kind of like his thing. Like three chords and just like which is really hard to do. Yeah. Like some of those songs that he does. I couldn't just sit down and do it. Like, and even though it's like simple to play or whatever, they're really clever songs. You know, like he's he's more talented than than he uh, may even realize. Man, that guy's just. I think all of us do that to ourselves. Yeah, I think so you too. Well, he doesn't downplay it. He's very comfortable. Yeah. Which is that's what I envy the most. Is even his even, level of comfort. Yeah, but I think we all fall into that. You yeah. and your artwork. Me doing this or cars or whatever. Even in cars. I, I was thinking about you and our conversation the other day about you discussing your artwork and how you feel like, oh, what the fuck, I'm not really holding up to par. Dude, when I drive into the car show, as we discussed on the last episode, you know, a week ago, <laughs> it's funny how I can remember it so well. Yeah, right. Almost like it was 45 minutes ago. Right, 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 right. Anyway, uh, when I drive into them car shows, I feel like I'm a fucking amateur compared to them guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, uh, what the fuck? I'm I'm not but on the same token, 
people walk up to me and they're like, holy yeah. shit. Because everybody's. Look at your fucking car. Everybody's you know? presentation is different to somebody else. You know? Yep. It's, yeah, it's what it is. And it's like as sloppy as you are. I think like Kurt Vonnegut said like something like, uh, like no matter how good or bad you are at something, just practice it anyway. Because it's, yeah. like, it's good for your soul kind of thing. And I don't want to sound too deep about it, but it is. Like, you know, if you're just somebody that loves painting. Yeah. But you can't paint for shit. Just go ahead and paint. Dude, know? the beauty of... So for me, this this podcast is my art, you know? Yeah. I don't look at the cars as much as... I uh, definitely do. When I look at you, I definitely think of your cars as like a form of creative out, uh, like a creative outlet. Sure. And I understand that. I mean, to me, it's... Um, I don't know. When I look at this, though, and like doing the intro, dude, I was so excited. Yeah. I was like, I was like in my fucking glory. I'm like, dude, I'm editing, I'm lowering the volumes, and I'm like manipulating it so it sounds the way I want it to sound. And like, um, even the rhythm of it, and then us recording our episodes and coming up with new concept of what we're going to talk about. To me, this is, this is me like, like letting the wild side out, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, <clears throat> It's funny because sometimes, like, I don't know about with your artwork or maybe with Kev, but, like, sometimes I take a lot of pride in it. I'm like, dude, I fucking knocked it out of the park on that one, you know? And I mean, like, I think it's an individual basis on certain pieces or whatever. Sure, There's plenty sure. of times that I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the problem with anything creative is you, us creative types, regardless of what we're making, are critical. Mm-hmm. And we have to be because we are... The creator, the editor, and we are also the audience Mm -hmm. because it's for us, really, you know? So, like, when I make this thing, if if I... I'm I'm trying to edit based upon the audience, but I'm the audience, so I don't really like it. So then I'm, like, trying to, like, manipulate my own thinking of, like, well, am I being too critical? You know what I mean? So, like, these are all the, the processes of creating something, and you're, like... You get fucking lost in it sometimes. Sometimes you just want to throw it the fuck away and like yeah. walk away. Dude, there's I throw away a lot of shit. Dude, even on this show, sometimes I'm just like, ah, what the fuck? I fucked up. I didn't, you know, yeah. I didn't do it the way I, I well, thought me, I, I should. I think like right now we got like two episodes that are like not, you know, out there because we were just like, I don't know about this one. You know? yeah. yeah. You know? And then there's a part of you and it's like, I think the beauty of what we forget about as creative people is that there's so many people out there that can't do what we do. And I don't mean that in a uh, egotistical way. I mean that, like, I think we forget that the audience isn't just us. Yeah. It's also people that can't do what we do here. There's people, I told they you They just sit in front of a microphone and they just freeze up. And they can't say shit. Well, just, just, uh, that's one of the many small facets of doing this is just talking coming up with the ideas creating the intro you creating the logos everything every fucking idea spurred from something right and just having the ability to sit down and fucking dive into it a lot of people can't Mm -hmm. they love the idea of a podcast i would love to do a podcast we'll do it just fucking sit down and do it right they'll never do it they'll never fucking do it so I think there's a part of us that that should feel that it's our duty in some sense to be creators, you know, to be, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately is like this concept of, you know, when you think about the the app TikTok, there's two types of TikTok users. There's creators and watchers, Uh you know, and I'm a creator. I go on there and I, I make bullshit for to entertain people, you know. And, and really, life, I think, is like that. Is like, there are some people out here that just create shit. You know, we, we are the creators of things. And then there's other people that stand back and kind of watch it and just, whether they admire it or, or whatever, you know, or critique it. But it's like, uh, I don't know. I guess I've been, like, thinking about that philosophically lately. Is just like, yeah. for the longest time, I felt like I wasn't creating nothing, you know? So now doing the podcast and... Sitting down with you, like, 
some days you and I get kind of like burnt out or, or like stuck in something and we're like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? What are we doing right now? Yeah. I feel like with those two episodes and then uh, like... Yeah, it was just like not the perfect fucking time to be trying maybe, you know? Sometimes you're just you're just uh, spinning tires, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes you're just like, what the fuck? I just... I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And like you and I have discussed on previous episodes of, uh, you know, every third Sunday is like, sometimes you just got to wait. Yeah. You know, you just got to wait out the storm and then the weather gets better and then you're just ready to fucking kick ass again, you know? Yep. And um, I don't know. I feel like that's where I'm at right now. I don't know about, I don't know about you, but like, dude, I'm excited, man. You know, yeah. you were coming over today. I was like, all ready. I kept saying like in my head, I was like, all right, I'm going to wake up early. You know, I'm going to jump on the fucking intro. And I was like, I was like so glad that like. Right that I started to get the intro together before you even arrived, you know? And so it, it was ready and good to go. and Yeah. Kind of gave yeah. us a jumping off point, too. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So. Yep. Life's got its ups and downs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. So it's, uh, in two days it'll be 4th of July. <clears throat> right. Yeah. 4th of July. Yeah, Independence Day. Kind of sucks that it's like on a fucking Tuesday. Yeah, I got to work tomorrow. Do you? Yeah. I took off. <sighs> Fuck a lot me. of people did. A lot of people at my job took off, but, you know, they're going to be like maybe like six of us that are there to kind of... Just staring at the floor? I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to do. I don't know if we're going to be pencils? there for a whole day or whatever. I mean, I'm, we're going to have work to do but it's not gonna be a, not gonna be like a regular day they should just let you just raise hell in that warehouse just fucking <laughs> dude, you should have like a indoor like uh i've had plenty of jobs where we did shit like that we had like barbecues at the warehouse and stuff like that or you know you should play a game dude they should let you like is yeah. it a big warehouse i mean it's filled with fucking freight exactly hide and seek <laughs> yeah right you guys should play hide or paintball run yeah. around in there with some that would be fun yeah. yeah, paintball in a warehouse would be fun. Some customer gets his fucking box and it's all lit up with fucking paintballs, yeah. you know? What the fuck I, is dude, this? I worked at a warehouse not that long ago, like as a part-time gig, that was so jam-packed from the floor to the ceiling with just giant fucking bales of, like, lumber and, like, drums. Like, everything was, like, from fucking ceiling to floor just packed. Hmm. It just felt so fucking, like, there was something about it that was really eerie. Yeah? You know? It was just a weird place. You know, big, big fucking warehouse, just full of shit. And it was, like, a dilapidated place. It was, like, shitty, dirty. I like them places. Yeah, you know, it was fucking filthy. It was I right love... on Right on the, on the water uh, in Chester. Like, yeah? There's, there's the river right there. Yeah, like, I could walk out the side dock, and there I was right on the water. Like... It was, hmm. it was strange, but it was like an eerie fucking place. It looked like a setting in like a video game or some shit. You know I what love I mean? them. Yeah. So that's where I found that 1990 Crown Vic that I sold. Yeah. I found that in a warehouse in Chester. Chester is fascinating because it is a very old city in well, this that's country. Well, this warehouse was like a car factory. Really? Back in like during World War II. No shit. And basically everything like seems like it's still original. Like yeah. it's not been very modernized, hmm. you know? Like, you look up, and there's, like, the, the skylight windows yeah. through the whole warehouse. I'd say, like, 60% of them are busted out. You know, in the winter, it was colder in the building than it was outside. Yeah. So, you'd be, like, freezing your fucking ass off. I mean, it was, like, it was brutal. I mean, I'm glad I was only there four hours a day. I couldn't imagine working there full time. You know? It was crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Not that interesting, but... Pretty cool, like, visual. But, yeah. Yeah. But it's, I love old stuff like that, though. That's yeah. why I like going to, uh, you know, like, I like going to different places. And I used to like going through abandoned buildings. Right. Yeah. For some reason, it's just kind of fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I think it's like the atmosphere, the ambiance, the, like, the visual of it or whatever. It's you like know. a carcass. Yeah. You know? You're kind of seeing something that's old. And, like, just seeing that it, it it once was something and now it's not anything. You used to be full of life. Yeah. You know? Right. It's kind of fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta sneeze. You gotta sneeze, sneeze, man. Just yeah. let it out. Kabloom! Sneeze. You know? Just sneeze some boogers all over that fucking... I uh, talked about it too much. It went away. <laughs> Pussy. 
What else, man? What else is going on? So it's Fourth of July. You're gonna be in that warehouse. You're gonna fucking. I'm not gonna be. In, I'm in the office. I got a white collar job in the office. Dude, do you ever like sneak <laughs> off and rub one out in there, man? No, like never. behind one. <laughs> 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 right behind one of the boxes. No. <laughs> <laughs> fucking blow, blow a little fucking snotter. <laughs> Just so one like one of your customers gets to this what box. What the fuck is this? It's like oh. a fucking, you know, it's something like it's like a collection of pillows from well. like some fancy fucking. <laughs> and on the side of the box is a big old fucking what? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> big old fucking dicks. <laughs> What's that? One yeah. of the warehouse workers just rub one out of your fucking pillows. Yeah. We we ship a lot of like dialysis machines. Really? I'd like to blow a load on one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. That's fucking funny. Yeah. Oh. No, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't feel like fucking working. Call uh, out, fuck them. No, dude. I can't do that. Why I, not? I just, fuck them. Nobody's man, here. I, I uh cause somebody else will have to take up the slack, you know. Yeah, fuck them. That's I their can't problem. Do that. Yeah, I can't do that to my, you know. I'm having a barbecue. You're you're more than welcome. I know, to, I know, and I want to come. You're more than welcome to call out or just tell me you got to leave. If you're there and it's fucking slow, just be oh, yeah, not fucking leave. If it's slow and there's nothing to do, I'm not fucking hanging around. Yeah, I'm out of here, man. Fuck this place. Yeah, no, you know? There's no reason to. Hmm. I dig it. Yeah. <sighs> man, we should have had a topic coming into this, huh? I know. We fucking jerked <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, um, what was I going to talk to you about? I was going to talk to you about food. Yeah. So, like, there's this uh, place in Collingdale that does seafood. So, my brother-in-law says to me last weekend, he's like, oh, yeah, man, I found this seafood place over in Collingdale. And I was like, hey, seafood's how you get fucking stomach poisoning. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not super excited about this, bud. And he's like, no, 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 they got really good reviews. And I'm like... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't really buy seafood in the fucking hood, man. I don't. I just. It's not about the neighbors or or the. It's. I'm not talking about the demographic of right, the people right, right. there. I'm just saying that that typically the seafood is some shit out of the back of a truck that's been in there, that truck for like fucking two months. You know, like. Yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised. No shit. What's the place called? Uh, Ocean Ocean Seafood or something like yeah. that, right on McDade Boulevard. I think that's what it's called. I would have to look that up to yeah. make sure. But it's a relatively new spot. It used to be a faux, faux something. Oh, okay. Closed. Yeah, yeah, the faux joints yeah. that used to be in Collingdale. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so that one closed, and then this is now like ocean seafood or some shit like that. Yeah. But uh, pretty good, dude. Let nice. me tell you something. Pretty good. We got crab legs. They put it in a fucking bag with like lemon pepper and a bunch of like... Uh, it's a lemon pepper dry rub and then some like like a little bit spicy hot sauce and some shit. Yeah. And my brother-in-law was like, dude, what they told me is is leave it in the bag, crack open the crabs, and then dip it in the sauce. Yeah. Like all the shit in the bottom, all the butter and everything. Yeah. It was fucking good. I bet. It was pretty fucking good. I bet. You know? I'm a seafood kind of guy. I so do I. Dude, I love it. I yeah. fucking love just like... And you can't get full on crabs. So you can eat crabs for fucking three hours and not... You know, feel a thing. I feel like that might happen today. Yeah, I feel it like today's like a, good a idea. seafood kind of day. It's a great day. Yeah, I would love to just have like a fucking day where I could eat like a fucking bunch of crab legs, drink some Rolling Rocks, and watch like RoboCop or fucking The Fly or some shit the like fly. that. The Fly. Yeah, just veg. How can you eat food that. and watch The Fly? Uh, yeah, I'm desensitized to it now. I guess. Really, it's fucking gross. I man. know. I love it though. Oh, dude, Fly makes me like. Yeah, Ugh. it traumatized me as a kid, but I love it now. Like I love it. Ah, uh. yeah. What have you been watching lately? Um, you know what I watch? I watch on HBO. There's a show called Painting with John, where it's uh, John Lory, who is like this like saxophone kind of like musician. I think he's done like a lot. I don't know. You know, like I don't know a ton about him, but I love his show, and I I know that he used to have a show called Fishing with John. Okay. Where he would basically go out on a boat and, like, fish with, like, all these, like, avant-garde type fucking musicians and artists and stuff like that. Like, fucking, uh, like, like Tom Waits or something. Like, guys that are, like, kind of an acquired taste, but people respect him regardless. Okay. Like, I don't like Tom Waits, but he Who's can... Who's that? Tom Waits is a... He's a singer-songwriter. 
You know Tom Waits if you heard some of his shit, probably. He's probably a jerk off. That's probably yeah. I I that's kind of how I feel about him. I think he's a jerk off. <laughs> But um, I but, said I mean, that, and he's I not not talented, haven't... but he's like so eccentric. Oh, and he's like, probably a jerk off then. Yeah, he's very eccentric. He's a very distinct sound to his voice. Sounds like he like gargled like fucking broken glass and like ate a cigarette before he started singing. Oh, you know, he's like one of those dudes. Is but he a cunt? I think he's a cunt. Okay. And to a certain extent, I think maybe John Lurie's even a cunt. But I like I love it. Like I love the show, and I like him, and I like like the way. And he's like so like tongue in cheek about it too. Like I think like his his most recent episode he had like Flea on the episode. Really? So like Flea comes in and like I like Flea. Yeah, Flea's the shit. And basically like he hangs out with Flea and they put on like fucking like uh like pinstripes like they were in jail or some shit and they just sat there and bullshit it for twenty minutes. But the one episode was like phenomenal. Like he like has like this like this like semi jazz blues music going on through the entire episode that him and his friends record. Yeah. And while it's going on, he's like talking over it, like almost smoke spoken word. Sure. But dude, it went on for like the entire episode. Like it started off and that was the entire episode was this. Hmm. But then the next episode will be a total departure from that. Yeah. It's it's just it's a fun show. It's like I'll have to check it out. I think you would like it. I think you would I think you would appreciate it. He's he's like not a great painter. Yeah. You know, it's like we said earlier, like, he just does it because it's good for his, you know, his soul or whatever. Dude, do you know who is a fucking phenomenal artist? Who's that? Terry Crews. Oh, is he really? He is really fucking talented. No shit. I didn't know that. So, if you follow his Instagram, he's been posting a lot of his artwork lately. Yeah. And, like, like videos of him drawing. He does, like, uh, pencil drawings and stuff and, like... I was like, I never would have fucking guessed that. But right. he is really fucking talented. But what I think is good and what somebody else thinks good is good is subjective. Well, So I maybe, mean, like, John Lurie's paintings are good to somebody. They're yeah. not. I don't look at them and go, oh, that's a great painting. But you and I critique on... Technique. Technique. Yeah. You know? So, like, when I looked at Terry Crews, he had, he had phenomenal lighting and shading techniques. Yeah, which that's all know? fucking art is to me. Yeah. It's how well you draw how light hits an object. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's what it is. That's when you get down to it technically, that's really what the fucking appeal of it is. I mean, that's how I judge. I know... According to modern art, especially when it gets very abstract, is m- more people are concerned with like some kind of suggested theme or something or like. But honestly, I think it gets lost, especially when you start getting into who's the guy that flicks paint. You know, that just does. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You know I, dude, I I don't know. I don't know why you would spend a million dollars on a fucking. Oh, that fucking guy. He's dead now, Pollock. Yeah, what yeah, a, his, what a his jerk fucking off, paintings suck, you know? dude. They fucking suck. I don't know how, like, I don't know how you're like, you spent a Why fucking would you spend million all that money? dollars. Yeah, on some shit. You could have like, got in a fucking thing and gone down and looked at the fucking Titanic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you could have went down there twice for a quarter of that price. A quarter of that price. Right. Instead, you got Instead, some. Instead, you got jerk some off. piece of shit fucking painting. That's and then of nothing. I'll even say like like Warhol, like yeah, I don't care for that shit. But I, again, it's subjective. Somebody dickhead, loves it. Somebody you know? out there loves it. Yeah, you know. But the show, the painting with John Laurie show is fucking fun as shit. Yeah, it's really fun. I think he's like in bad health or whatever, and he like lives out in the fucking, we're in like the Caribbean or some shit like that. No shit. And he just hangs out in his house painting and telling stories, and you know. And he's got, like, his assistant there, who I don't know if it's his girlfriend or not. I don't fucking know. She's a really cute, like, uh, foreign woman, Nezrin. I don't know what her nationality is. But she's really cute. She's nice. And then he's got, like, his, like, uh, like I don't know if she's, like, a maid or a housekeeper or whatever. Sex leave. No, not at all. No. You sure? I I'm positive. But he incorporates them into the show. And they have, like, these little recurring bits that they do. But it's not really produced. You know what I mean? It's just like, it seems spontaneous. I think they're all trying to copy off of. Like, I think you us. need to watch it to understand it. Okay. And I think you would really love it. I think you would like it. I think you would go. This is pretty fucking cool. And that's just how I look at it. I'm like, this is fucking cool. Really? This is a cool fucking show. Yeah. And it's just like. I judge harshly, though, man. You can judge it however you want. It's it seems sloppy, but so, it's it's still good. So right now. He's very secure and comfortable in his skin, and I think that's what what makes it good. 
Right now on HBO, there's another show that everybody keeps pushing me on, and they're like, oh, yeah, did you see Robert Downey Jr.'s show I just, about the cars? Yeah, I think I just texted you about that. And I'm like, I have such a hard time watching a show about something. But I think you would like something. that, too. Yeah, and I'm going to have to try it, but it's like... Dude, I feel like when I see this ultra celebrity that's trying to be casual and trying to be like, oh, look, I'm more than just an actor, I have a tendency, I, like, I believe they're, they're full of shit. So, like, like, all right, so on the car side of things, because I'm a huge car enthusiast, Kevin Hart did a, a show where him and his dickhead friends, they all owned a bunch of muscle cars, and, like, it was very staged. Everything seemed super staged and, like, scripted. You know, so like uh-huh. they would have these meetups, they would have like these group talks and like Kevin's running the show and they're like, all right, we're going to we're going to join the car club community and we're going to become car enthusiasts. And it just to me, it comes off as ultra phony, right. like super, super phony. You're showing up to a car club like a, a like a like. So the car show that I went to uh, yesterday. Um. Imagine a, a fucking local celebrity shows up in some car that's worth a million fucking dollars that he clearly spent, a, you know, a huge amount of money paying somebody like me to build for them. Mm-hmm. It's hard for us to respect you because there's always this theory of like built, not bought, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, dude, it's cool that you got that. But at the end of the day, like... If you want to really impress me, I want to see you... I want to see you do it. Climb right. under that fucking car on some jack stands, some sketchy-ass Harbor Freight jack stands that are that have a recall. They're, they could crush you to death. Yeah. You know? Climb under the car and change some shit out, and let me see you get some oil on your fucking face. Right. And... I uh, think that's, like, part of my issue with it, too, is, like, when I see, like, some of those cars that you're doing or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, I would love to own that. But if you ask me a question about that car, I don't do shit about it. Well, you know? it's a it's, it's a, like I don't want to just be driving around in it and then like know nothing about it. Yeah, you know? but that's a part of the problem too, though, because at the end of the day, not everybody can do what we do. You know, yeah. people like your artwork and they buy your artwork and hang it on their walls because they can't. They can't create that. Mm-hmm. You are the creator, and I think that there's such a problem with our within our our thinking is that like, oh, you're a piece of shit because you can't do what I do. But the reality is, is you should be able to buy a car and go, dude, I don't know. I like 1970 Chevelles and I always fucking wanted one. And I didn't build it, but I fucking love it. And you know what? Here's the guy that did build it. He knew what he was doing. So I pay him to fucking fix the car and take care of it. There should be nothing wrong with that. I should not look down on you yeah. because you want a cool car, but you don't know how to fix it. It's not a matter of fixing it. I don't know shit about it to begin with. Doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, dude. I mean, so and this is this is where it gets uh, really tricky. You, I wouldn't say nothing about a woman that went out and bought a convertible Mustang. Yeah, that's I wouldn't true. fucking break her yeah. balls. And be like, oh, you stupid bitch! I can't I think believe you just, bought this. I think it just makes it look like you have too much money for your own good, kind of thing. Like for me. I mean, yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah, but that's because in our society we judge each other. Yeah. You know, some people drive past my house and they're like, "How the fuck does that guy afford that?" Yeah. You know, but then I drive out to Chad's Ford and I'm like, "Look at this piece of shit! I can't believe he lives in this fucking house." Yeah. You know, and reality is, is we're all struggling. Nobody yeah. in this country knows how to go. Hey, man, he's a fucking human. He's just, he's right. just trying to have a good time before he goes. Yeah, that's true. You know, so, dude, buy the car, man. I'm not buying nothing. Bye. Don't buy the car. Fuck <laughs> I'm, I'm not buying shit anymore. But, I mean, on the same token, I should look at a celebrity that's trying to, like, enjoy themselves. Yeah. And I should watch the show and just be unbiased and, like, try to I think you would dick. like it. And it's not so much that, like, you're going to watch it and be, like, disgusted with Robert Downey Jr. I think you're going to enjoy the people that are around him that have the knowledge. So, you know what's my fear? But I think there's a... I'm not sure if this is true or not. I think he's taking like classic cars and making them like eco friendly. That kind I of annoys think. that kind of annoys me. Yeah, and I thought maybe that would, but I thought just the I think the technical side of the show you'll enjoy. 
So it annoys me, but it's also a little bit. I'm a little curious because they right. you can make them things really fast. Yeah, I mean maybe he's going to make like a GTO that runs on corn oil or some shit. I nah, don't fucking they're using, know. No, they're using electric motors. Oh, so maybe. Tesla Tesla sells a crate motor, which is like it's a race car motor. It's yeah. a big old electric motor that drops right in the engine bay. You got to figure out where to put the batteries at. You got to you know, can you know make the computer that's going to control this thing but like they do sell it oh they already sell it it's like twelve thousand dollars you know it's it's a you know a good chunk of change right but it will be 100 percent electric and not run off of gasoline at all (coughs) yeah there you go there's that fucking sneeze we were talking about sneaky fucker we got him we got him got it i knew it was coming so uh i'll (laughs) check it out you know so my other fear of, of robert downey jr is that I love him. Yeah, and now you might think he's kind of a douche. And that's a worry of mine, yeah. because I really... Uh, he's a recovering addict. There's he's a guy that, yeah. that changed his life. Maybe you'll like him even more. Maybe you'll find out, like, huh, he knows some shit that I didn't think he knew. Perhaps. I Perhaps. think he's just watch one episode. Yeah, if you don't like I don't it, want you know? him to taint my image of Iron Man, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, this is a man that I fucking... <laughs> I mean, you know, like... I would, I man crush him a little bit. You yeah, know? not on like a sexual no, level. I know what you like mean. I don't want to suck his dick, you know. Yeah. But like, and you know, and for anybody that knows me, like, dude, I'm not apart from that. I would suck Brad Pitt's we dick. We don't I'm want this saying. to fall on death. And not gay in a years. gay we and not in a gay way. I'm just saying that man is so fucking beautiful that I would, <laughs> I would suck his dick if he asked me. I'm just saying. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> I think it was uh, Norm MacDonald says that in like one of his last comedy specials. It was so good. I'm just saying. Something where he like ends up like blowing a waiter or something. <laughs> and uh, and he was like, you know, I don't like you very much, but I'm a man of my word. or something. He was so fucking funny, man. I love Norm MacDonald. I loved how I uncomfortable love he him. made people. Man. Yeah, and he was so dry about it, too. Dude. I fucking love, love Norm MacDonald. Dude, he was on something, and he was just like, uh, yeah, well, you know. He does fuck children. Yeah, talking yeah. about Michael Jackson. Oh, he he and loves like saying that shit about Michael Jackson. Right in front of like yeah. a bunch of people. And you're just like, ooh, yeah. this fucking guy. He don't give so, a fuck. So I did, I did like, when it, when I think of my comedy and the things that I do, <laughs> the shock value of Norm MacDonald was always a part of like... I'm going to have to say he's probably my favorite comedian. Definitely up it's there. It's him, George Carlin. Yeah. Like those are my two favorites. He's one of the greats. That's for yeah. sure. He's, you know? so, he's special. Um, what was I just thinking of? Uh, I fucking totally brain farted. Damn it. Damn it. (laughs) I don't even know. Um, well, we fucked this episode. We fucked it right in its ass. Oh, uh, what was I talking about? I was like, I was reflecting on uh, a conversation that you and I had that never made it on air. But I was I was picking your brain about watching uh, tranny porn. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I said something and I did it on purpose. I, I was like trying to make it awkward. I was like, "Yeah, you would never watch tranny porn." Yeah, oh, I've, yeah. I've watched tranny porn. Yeah, yeah I think I remember. I was this. like, "Dude, would you watch a tranny fuck a chick?" And you were like, "No, no, I wouldn't." I was like, "Shit, yeah, man, I've done it. I've jerked off to yeah. it." <laughs> And you were like, you got all fucking quiet Jesus. on me. You were like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Aaron sent me a thing one time where it was like two dudes having sex, right? And it was like a fucking thing that popped. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and uh, and like the guy's bouncing up and down, on the dude, and his and the the fucking receiver, the the catcher here, his dick is swinging like in a <laughs> clockwise motion or whatever. And it says if you watch his dick swing ten times, you're gay or something like that. And I was, he thought that was funny. He thought that was fucking hilarious. But uh, I was like, Jesus Christ, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it uncomfortable? Did <laughs> you watch just, it for eleven rotations? Look, man, it's not something that like it's not part of like my um, I don't know. It's not part of my repertoire to to watch guys, you know, take it in their butt or whatever. It's just not me. It's not a thing. That it's not we a do. thing. It's not a thing that I do. <laughs> do you think that's like a part of? I don't have a like. Listen, I'm not going to apologize for this either. No, I don't care. I, the, the problem, know, like, the problem is, is why, why is it that I have to be so comfortable yeah, watching right, right, right. something else? Yeah, like I think it's comical because right now I've been watching these movies where they're like, 
they're fighting to illustrate straight people and gay people intermingling. Right. And like, I think it's so weird to watch a straight couple in a film fake, like they, they fictitiously like cheer on the gay kid. Yeah. It's very like, unnatural. Dude, it's not fucking natural. That's not normal. Right. People don't do that. Oh, yo, holy shit, you fuck him right in the ass, bud. <laughs> like, what are you talking yeah. about, dude? Yeah. I don't even think it... It's not even, like, really <laughs> natural. Fuck him right in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> go, just go an inch deeper. <laughs> Get it all the way in there, man. Get to the base of them balls. <laughs> that, Listen, son... Like- they, it, but people like accuse you of being homophobic because you're not comfortable with it. It's not that. It fucking it it doesn't do anything for me. Like well, I don't want to know. End, like I don't need to see day, something that to be, doesn't appeal to me. In in normal social culture, you know, and and I say normal, I mean like ten years ago, sex is a relatively private thing, and and to me, I still think that that's the biggest problem. Is like, dude. I don't care what you do no. in your house. I just don't. But wanna... like, we don't have to discuss Listen, it in public. And like, when I was a kid, okay, when I was a teenager, and I had a girlfriend, I was like so charged up and horned up over it all yeah. the time. I made out with this chick anywhere and everywhere, and I didn't care who was around. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it made people uncomfortable. Sure. You know, like people were like, yo, dude, get a room. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So why is it any different that yeah. I don't want to see your display of affection like in my face everywhere to fucking go? I don't care. I don't fucking care about, you know, the thing that makes you come. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't. Dude, at the yeah. end of the day, and I understand the whole blight of like uh, fighting for equality in the gay community. Because I think, as a friend of mine once said to me, dude, you can't stop love. And I agree with that. Listen, if you're a member of the gay community and you're in love with this person, that is something that transcends gay or straight. It doesn't matter. If you're in love with this person, nobody should fucking stop you. And that's coming from a guy that's married to a black woman where, dude, a hundred fucking years ago, they would have hung me and my wife for Mm -hmm. being in a relationship. So, yes, I have to believe that you're allowed to love anybody you fucking want. Right. You know? As long as it's not a child. Look, yeah. I'm, cro- I'm not going to cross that fucking line. Yeah, that's another know? thing I have an issue with. It's like some of the stuff like the, like the, um, like there, there's a, a level of like decency that people are just crossing the line of. So the funny thing is. is so like when like the trans stripper is yeah. dancing in front of like. The kids. Kids or whatever. Nah. Like, what? No thanks. Like, this isn't what you do, man. Like, this just isn't... These are kids. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so that that's the problem. And it, and it's funny because when you watch both political sides arguing back and forth, it's like none of them understand why can't we find a happy medium. Right. You know? Like, that's the part that I'm always blown away by is like, dude... Nobody's saying that you can't be a trans person or you can't be a gay person or you can't be anything. Why don't we draw the line at children and leave the fucking kids alone? Like, that's yeah. for me, that's my personal touch on this is like, dude, if you decide at 18 years old that you identify as a man or a woman or whatever, who the fuck am I to tell you anything? Yeah. I'm a nobody. I don't belong in your life, if, especially if you don't agree with me or I don't agree with you, then we're not to, we don't have to fucking hang out, you know? We don't have to try to convince each other. But the moment that you start telling me that I'm a piece of shit because I'm raising my kids a certain kind of way, well, who the fuck are you, yeah. you know? And that's the hurdle that I get into is like, where do we draw the line here? Now, I know on the conservative side of things, that's what everybody keeps arguing about is like, well, the progressive people are going too far. They always go too far. And and it's funny because you have to think like, I don't know, there are people that are openly saying, I am a person that's attracted to minors. And, and like, as a society, why are we not supposed to just, I don't understand why I'm supposed to just smile and be like, yeah, that guy lives right across the street, wants to fuck my kids. Yeah. I don't want to think like that. I don't want to, I'm not going to think like that. I'm telling you right now, it's not fucking happening. Nope. 
And I know that makes me sound like a gun-toting, confederate, fucking neo-Nazi, homophobic piece of shit. But I'm not really any of that. I'm just a guy that wants my children to be safe, you know? I don't give a fuck if they're gay. I don't care if they change their genders when they're an adult, you know? But right now... Leave them the fuck yeah, alone. Yeah, let them just be fucking kids, man. They just want to go in the backyard and play and fucking yep. wrestle with the dogs and shit and fucking have fun. Yeah. Oh, shit. This is a throwaway episode. Why you say that? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we went down to like a very serious... Yeah. You yeah. know? You know what? Dude, fuck all that, man. I don't care. I don't care. I don't fucking care. I'm fucking hungry, man. Yeah. You hungry? A little bit. You want some food? Possibly. Dude, I got Boost Corner Scrapple. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't eat Scrapple. You don't eat Scrapple? I'm not a Scrapple guy. You don't want the leftovers off the floor? I don't really eat Scrapple. Like, I don't think I've ever eaten it. Like, I think I've taken a bite and been like, I'm good. Really? I don't have a problem with it. I yeah? I just, just don't want it. Yeah. Mm, I love it. I like, uh, I like, like, you know, bacon's fine. Bacon's? Bacon, yeah, bacon's the shit. Bacon's great. Yeah, like, bacon, I guess, is my go-to breakfast meat. Yeah. Every once in a while, maybe a sausage, you know? You love the sausage. I don't love it, but every once in a while, I like it. I was it. making a gay joke. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> I don't like sausage. I'm not gay. No. Oh, man. <laughs> I, this is this is the... Uh, this is the... Uh, this is the episode where we just On shoot, gay deaf ears. She, we shoot all over... What Somebody did we say it was? Gun? On deaf gay ears? So somebody, somebody we grew up with reached out to me and they were like, uh, hey man, I love the episode. And he said specifically, he was like, I love the fact that you invited a Ku Klux Klan member to come on your show and talk about how he likes making doll houses. Oh. <laughs> I think it was just passing conversation, man. We didn't Shit. invite nobody, did we? Well, I mean, uh, we, we would... We insinuated that you We could would come. listen to him, you yeah. know? Like, I mean, I mean... Hear me out. As long as he doesn't <laughs> drop, you know, any nasty words in there, like, this is... You know, a relatively decent I mean, that's, show. That's like a debate is for a lot of people. Is like, you know, you might be the most talented motherfucker in the world at one thing. Yeah. And nobody can do this better than you. Yeah. But because you are this, 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 and this, I can't support you. you yeah. Know? It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that kind of stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I just heard uh, the other day that R. Kelly is doing uh, multiple life sentences. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, he should. Yeah, he fucks kids, man. Yeah, he's a piece you of know? shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, he fucked kids on, on, like, on video. He didn't give a fuck. I think he married, like, Aaliyah when she was, like, fucking 13 or 14 years old. No way. That yeah. young? Really? Yeah. The really? girl that died in the car, car crash. Yeah. Yeah. Not the she car crash. She wasn't that young, crash. Was she, she was young, dude. Really? Fucking young. Crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, boy. What do we want to talk about? How can we car crash the fuck out of this episode? I think we more? already did. No, yeah. let's not car crash nothing no more. That's no more. No more, <laughs> no more car crashes. No more car crashes. <laughs> oh, all right. No. Like... What else of a dumpster fire can we discuss? You know, Biden's economy. Hmm? I don't what know else? shit about it. <laughs> Trump's Trump's uh, Trump's allegations. Nah. Fucking silly. All these people. Everything's crazy. Yeah, I don't even, like, watch the news anymore. Like, I don't, I don't, like, have, like, I don't put the news on. Nothing. Dude, I wish people would just stop talking to me about it. I don't give a fuck anymore about nothing. Nope. You know? I'm, like, becoming a nihilist. You know? Like. Yeah. I'm, like, dude, I don't want to do it. I don't want to participate. You nope. know? Hmm. Chris Hunter, the sovereign nation. Don't say that. Because they have a FBI has a whole fucking yeah. folder full of uh, what do they call them? Sovereign citizens. They're fucking crazy though. They're fucking yeah. idiots. My wife was asking me about that because she's been watching these court case things uh, about these crazy people. The cops will pull them over. They won't roll the window down. They'll be yelling at the cop through the window or through a slit in the window. And, and they like, kind of act like they're above the law. They're like, you can't do that. I'm a sovereign citizen. I, I liberated my social security number and I have control of my entity. And rah, 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 whatever jerk off shit they think in their head. And I'm like, yeah, but you're currently on U.S. soil. Yeah, right. So therefore, and I don't like it either, but we have to abide by the laws to some degree 
or at least deal with the consequences of those laws that we break because that's the fucking deal we all made when we lived in this country, you mm. know? <sighs> so no, I'm not a sovereign citizen. I'm not one of them fucking lunatics. I, it's so funny because they think that they're going to get out of legal trouble. They're yeah. like, no, 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 you can't do this. You can't. No, I'm a sovereign citizen. You can't. You can't just. Uh, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> they can do whatever the fuck they want. You know, I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed, but they can do whatever they want. Yeah, and they they will. And they will. They will do whatever they want. They will shoot black people if they feel like it. <laughs> we have seen. I don't. I don't mean. I and just white think, guys too. I they think like when it comes down people. to it, like. If you're going to fucking challenge the government, you're going to challenge law enforcement, chances are you're not going to win. Really good fucking chances. You're not, yeah. Really, like, I would not bet on those chances. Right. There's people that are in, like, fucking government fucking holding situations that are never going to fucking not be in that situation. Isn't that, like, the crazy thing that people still think that they're going to That's their life. What, in a cell? Yeah. I got friends that are in cells that are... That's their know, life. That's their their existence. Hmm. I don't know. Dude, I would be like Shawshank Redemption, man. You would never in your fucking life... I'm telling you right now, I would spend the rest of my goddamn life trying to escape. Yeah? I'm telling you right fucking now, I'm, I don't care if the government hears me or not. Dude, if you locked me up, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm not a suicidal person. I don't really believe in that, but... Make no mistake, I'm going to be hey, scratching it's... the mortar between these fucking bricks for the rest of my life. Yeah. I need hope that I'm not going to be here forever, you know? Right. I just have, like, this, dude, fuck you. <laughs> I will literally use this plastic fork and scratch the mortar out between these bricks one by one for the rest of my goddamn life. Me and the fucking rats are going to sneak through the walls... <laughs> And I'm fucking leaving, dude. My celly won't even know that I'm doing it. Yeah. Just little by little, just picking grains of fucking mortar out of that thing. Just boop, <laughs> boop, boop. You know, we'll do a couple more tomorrow, you know? And, like, sweep the floor, get rid of the fucking dust. I couldn't imagine, man. Like, I, I think I'd, I hope I can draw, you know? <laughs> I hope I could do something. That's all they do. I'd That's be doing a lot of fucking push-ups. Yeah. You'd be a just, strong motherfucker, man. Yeah, I mean, but, but I mean, like your body needs activity of some sort, so I think that's why guys get kind of jacked in prison. They don't nothing better to do, and they jerk know? off a lot. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I, th- I think I think like there's some, like as I'm getting older, I'm starting to feel like my libido kind of decreasing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm almost comfortable with it. I don't it's even like, care anymore. Yeah. I don't care. Now I can think. You yeah. know, <laughs> I can yeah. fucking think, no, I can dude. I remember sitting in my house for fucking hours, rubbing one loose, man. I swear <laughs> to God, I'm not even exaggerating, dude. As a younger guy, I remember being so worked up that I literally was like, "Ah, fuck it, internet porn in my hand. Yeah. This is what we're doing today." You know, when I was and a just, kid, I would three times a day, dude. It was so bad, and then it was like I couldn't even focus. If I had shit to do, I was just like, "Yeah, guess we're not accomplishing nothing yeah. today." You I couldn't know? fall asleep unless I did it. Sometimes, you know. Yeah, fucking, and I would like beat myself raw. Sometimes. When I was like, when I was like fourteen <laughs> years old, it was like constantly in situations, man. At right age, trying to find something to heal my fucking. <laughs> To heal my uh, my wounded. Dude, Dave, you, have you ever jerked off with a condom on just because you didn't want to clean it up? <laughs> I don't think I have. Fuck no. that. I've done that, yeah. dude. I was like, oh, this is a new sensation. It's a little different, yeah. you know? Dude, there was something oddly fucking enjoyable about using condoms. Really? Yeah, I remember that. I remember like being like, there was something about it that just made sense. Like, it just felt different or something. You yeah. Know? Well, There's when something you're young, I think it's just the whole idea of like, this is... I'm I mean, I lost my this. virginity using a condom, so... Did you? Yeah. I don't even know. I yeah. don't even remember. And thank I God I, I did. I hope I did. Because, you know, you lose your virginity, you're two strokes in, you're done. Oh, yeah, dude. You know, so I would, like... I just... Because you know, I was wearing a condom, I just went for a couple more minutes just to make myself seem like I was... <laughs> Not a chump, you know? <sighs> and then you fake it. You fake cum. You fake cum like fucking 10 minutes later. You're like, oh, hey, yeah. That was great. That was so good. Oh, have you, you ever have Just you ever pat her faked, on the forehead. Have good you job. as a man ever faked 
busting a nut. Oh, yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, got to yeah. go. Yeah, I'll clean this up later. Nah. Just leave it on and walk out the door. I remember one time <laughs> I was with this chick, and it, I was just like, I don't know, about 20 or 30 minutes into it, and I was just like, this has to end. Like, I just wasn't into it. Yeah. I wasn't into her. I didn't really find her attractive. Yeah. And I was just like... I got it. like, and I feel bad saying that because I'm not the most attractive dude on the planet. Doesn't either. matter. But Doesn't like, matter. it just it wasn't clicking in my head. You yeah. Know? So it was like, I was like, let me just make like I finished and yeah. run in that bathroom and flush this condom down the toilet <laughs> and be like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Pat her on the head. Good job. Good Which, job. Yeah. I just I totally faked it. Yeah. And I was like, man, I just let's go watch American Gladiators. <laughs> yeah. Just over with. Oh, oh shit! All right, man. Well, this was a train wreck. Yeah, I still think that we should have the listeners let them have it, man. Let yeah. them have it. You know. Well, there's that one. Yeah. On on gay deaf ears. On gay deaf ears. Stay tuned. It's only going to get better. Or worse. Or worse. Bye. All right. Let's get that outro. Thanks for listening to Renaissance Manchild. Renaissance Manchild is a Yardbird Tuna production. If you enjoyed the show, please like, follow, and share. Any ideas or suggestions, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> you talk good. <laughs> <laughs>